All right, today we're going to start working with how to multiply fractions, which is a very important skill as we lead into an algebra sequence here in a few weeks. Um, and I'm just going to get started right into some examples. A lot of people like multiplying fractions better because we do not have to get a least common denominator. Let's actually write that off to the let's actually write that as at the be beginning here. Before we write our first example, let's make a note. Note. You do not need LCDs when multiplying or dividing fractions. That's still a skill that you have to have. All right. If I add or subtract fractions, I have to be able to get a least common denominator. But if I'm multiplying them, I do not. All right. So let's get right to some examples here, and you'll see what I mean. Let's say that I have um, 3 fifths times 7 eighths. We'll just start with this one. Um, and the reason I'm starting with this one is because there's no factoring involved. And I'm going to talk about factoring on the next example. We always look diagonally between the 3 and the 8 to see if there's any common factors, and there's not. And then I look at the 5 and the 7 to see if there's any common factors, and there's not. If there's no common factors diagonally, all I got to do is multiply across. What's 3 times 7? 21. What's 5 times 8? 40. And then you have to ask, is my fraction reduced? Just like we did before. Is that fraction reduced? It is. So that one's very simple, but most of them aren't going to be that way. Most of them are going to have some factoring involved, like this one. 5 sixths times 4 fifths. Now remember what I said, we're going to look diagonally for factors. Remember, factors are numbers that will go evenly into a number. Let's look at this 4 and the 6. Is there a number that will go into both 4 and 6? Now remember, it can't be bigger than 6, right? It has to be 6 or smaller. What is that number? 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide both of these by 2. I'm going to divide these two diagonals by 2. So what is 6 divided by 2? Three. 3. So what I usually do is I will mark this out. Don't put a big X because I want you to be able to understand your work. And I put a 3 down here. 6 divided by 2 is 3. What's 4 divided by 2? Two? 2. So I mark that out and I put a 2 up here. Now let's look the other direction. At the 5's, is there a common factor between 5 and 5? Five? Sure is. You like it, you will like it when you see this because 5 divided by 5 is what? 1. So you can basically just mark both these out and put a 1. Because 5 divided by, if you divide them both by the same number, don't you just get 1? Right? So look what I have left. All the circled numbers that I have left, that's what I multiply by. What's 1 times 2? 2 over, what's 3 times 1? 3. The answer is 2 thirds. Okay, so you have to be able to factor diagonally before you do anything. Okay, I'm going to give you um, two examples here to try on your own. Try that one and this one. And I'm going to pause the video. You try those without me. 
All right, let's see how you did. On the first problem, I looked diagonally first with 6 and 8. Is there a common factor for 6 and 8? Yes, there is. 2. I can divide both of these by 2. And we always must do that. If you don't do that, you're going to wind up with big fractions that are hard to reduce. So what is 6 divided by 2? 3. What is 8 divided by 2? 4. Now let's look at 5 and 7. Is there any common factors for 5 and 7? There is not. So now I am ready to multiply across with what I have left. 3 times 5 is 15. 7 times 4 is 28. So your answer should have been 15 28 Now let's look at the next problem that you had to do. How about 8 and 24? There is definitely a common factor there. 8 will go into both of them. You want to use the biggest one you can. All right. So if I divide 8 by 8, that becomes 1. If I divide 24 by 8, that becomes 3. Now let's look at the other diagonal. What's the biggest number that will go into both 12 and 16 evenly? 4. So I'm going to divide 12 by 4, which makes it 3. And I'm going to divide 16 by 4, which makes it 4. Now I'm ready to multiply across with what I have left. 1 times 4 is 4. 3 times 3 is 9. Your answer should have been 4 ninths. Okay. Now, sometimes you'll have some different situations pop up like a whole number, 3 fourths times 8, something like that. Well, this is not hard at all. It just means that I need to rewrite it as 3 fourths times 8 over 1. You can always write a whole number over 1. And now I'm ready to factor, okay? Let's look diagonally and see if we can factor. First, we look at the 4 and the 8. What's the biggest number that will go into both 4 and 8? 4. So I'm going to divide 4 by 4, and I get 1. I'm going to divide 8 by 4, and I get 2. How about 3 and 1? What's the only number I could divide them both by? 1. Would that make any sense to divide them both by 1? Won't they both be the same thing? What's 1 divided by 1? 1. What's 3 divided by 1? 3. So they, it doesn't change them any or help us any. So if one of these factors is 1, you know that you don't need to do any factoring there. All right. So now I'm ready to multiply across with what I have left. I have 3 times 2, which is 6. And I have 1 times 1, which is 1. So my answer is just 6. Okay. So if you have um, a whole number, you just put it over 1. Sometimes you'll have bigger, uglier numbers. Like something like this, 7 16 times 96. Well, we do the same thing. I write this as 7 16 times 96 over 1. And we ask ourselves, what can I divide both 16 and 96 by? This is why you have to know your times tables again. If there's something bigger than 4, how about 8? Right? If I divide both of these by 8, 16 divided by 8 is 2. 96 divided by 8, you should know that times table. That's 12. I have a 1 down here, so I don't need to do anything the other way. 
So now I have 7 times 12, which is 84, over 2 times 1, which is 2. Now, is that an appropriate final answer? No. I can just divide. This fraction bar, remember, means division. 84 halves is like 84 divided by 2, so you can just divide. I think everybody knows that half of 84 is going to be 42. Now there's one other situation that we have to learn how to, how to deal with, and that's mixed numbers. Okay? Before I do that, I want to just go over something that we have not talked about yet. If I have 3 and 2 thirds, just a plain old mixed number, and I want to make it improper, I want to show you how to do that. It's very easy. I multiply 3 times 3. I work around this way. 3 times 3, which is what? 9. And then I add the 2. What's 9 plus 2? So this is the same thing as 11 thirds. Okay? That's how you switch a mixed number to an improper fraction. Let's try another one. What if I had 5 and 2 sevenths? What would that be as an improper fraction? 7 times 5. I multiply here, work around. 7 times 5 is 35. 35 plus 2 is 37 over 7. The reason that's important is because when I multiply or divide fractions, I cannot use mixed numbers. Okay? I have to use the improper form. All right? So let's do an example and see how we use this. Let's say that I had 2 and 6 sevenths times 2 and 4 fifths. A mixed number times a mixed number. Well, I have to make both of those improper like I did up here before I even start the problem. Put this in your notes. Make improper first and underline it and put an exclamation point. You have to make mixed numbers improper first. So let's do that. 7 times 2 is 14. 14 plus 6 is 20 over 7. Times 5 times 2 is 10 plus 4 is 14 over 5. And now I'm ready to multiply these using my factoring. So let's look diagonally. 7 and 14, what's the biggest number that will divide evenly? 7. So I divide them both by 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1. 14 divided by 7 is 2. How about the 5 and the 20? What should I divide by? 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 20 divided by 5 is 4. And now I'm ready to multiply across with what I have left. 4 times 2 is 8. 1 times 1 is 1. 8 over 1 is 8. So when you have mixed numbers, you have to make them improper first. Let's do one more problem. 6 times 6 and 1 third. Well, this one, I've got two things going on. I have a whole number. What do I do with the whole number? Put it over 1. 6 over 1. Times, what do I do with the 6 and 1 third? Make it improper. 3 times 6, 3 times 6 is 18. 18 plus 1 is 19 
over 3. We have to make it improper before I ever do the problem. You cannot multiply or divide with mixed numbers. So I try to factor. Is there anything I can factor? There is, isn't there? What can I, I can factor the 6 and the 3. What am I going to divide them both by? 3. Divide this one by 3, I get 1. Divide 6 by 3, I get 2. The other way, I have a 1 down here, so I don't need to do anything. I'm ready to multiply across. 2 times 9 is 38. 1 times 1 is 1. 38 over 1 is 38. And we will stop there for today.